It's the quarterfinals of the Group 4 North 2 sectional tournament where the Westfield Blue Devils are set to take on the Franklin Warriors. Mike Lennier alongside Mac Lederman. And Mac, what's going to be the key tonight for the Westfield Blue Devils? We got two undersized teams here in West, at Westfield High School who both love to shoot the three. For Westfield to contend with Franklin, they're going to need to crowd the three point line, pressure up on their shooters, and look out for their star player, Franklin's Malachi Walker, who came off 21 points in the last game versus Melbourne, also hitting the game winning three throw. The final score of that one, 48-47, and it was a close game for Westfield also, Mac. A 58-53 win. Do you expect something different tonight? Um, I expect Westfield to run away with this game. Um, they're heavily favored. They got everything clicking from the last game. They just beat a really tough team in Bridgewater Raritan. Westfield's played Milburn earlier in the season and has blown them out. Franklin can only beat them by one point, so I expect to see West Westfield advance here in the tournament. The winner will play Newark East Side. The Newark East Side North Hunterdon winner Saturday night at 7. Westfield wins. We'll have the call for you here. Start uh, tip off at 7 o'clock. We'll have starting lineups and the Star Spangled Banner coming right up on BDTV. For the quarterfinals of the Group 4 North 2 sectional tournament, Michael Lennar alongside Mac Lederman as usual. But Mac, tonight we're expecting a different kind of game than what we saw on Monday night, uh, Tuesday night, excuse me, when it was a really close ball game against yeah, Bridgewater. Yeah, that's definitely for sure, Mike. Westfield was heavily, uh, is heavily favored in this game, but we had a close competition l uh, last night against Bridgewater Raritan. Um, all the analysts are saying that this one's back to be won by a wider margin, but once again, don't sleep on this Franklin team. I said in our intro that they were an undersized team, but on second thought, looking at these guys now, these are some big kids. Westfield's going to need to match up with that. They're a the smaller team. They're favored, but they're going to need to make some adjustments. I expect them to pull this one out. Warriors are 12 and 10 coming into the game. Starting for them, Irving Callender, senior number one. Senior number two, Tyler Lennon. Junior, Khalil Powell, number 10. Tail Swindle, number 11, senior. And senior, number 22, Malachi Walker. Franklin in blue, Westfield in white. Another packed house as the Warriors win the tip. We got a 7 o'clock tip here today, Mike, but it's 2 o'clock Hawaiian time with the big student section all coming out of their Hawaiian shirts. The same guys that were out here to support their Blue Devil team and the Bridgewater game have come out here once again tonight. Malachi Walker missed the first shot, but Owen Murray at the other end using the glass. Impressive move there by Owen Murray using his left hand, a long lefty shot. That's the kind of stuff you see from Steve Nash, and Owen Murray has added that to his repertoire. Malachi Walker, the leader of this Warriors team, averaging uh, ten and a half points a game, coming off a nice 21 in their win over Milburn Tuesday night. A one-point win as Jelani Pierre gets a steal. There's Mealy on the end, but the reverse slab can't connect. Mealy was wide open underneath, should have gone up for the reverse on the left-hand side of the basket instead of bringing it all the way around. Pull-up three from Callender is off the mark. As it looks like the Warriors are in 2-3 LaCour driving baseline. Beautiful dish and he finds Owen Murray who lays it in. Owen Murray, two quick shots here. We're using his left hands on both shots. He's, he's really impressive early. He's got all four West Hill points. And there's the Chief Thief, Nick Mealy playing some tight D. But we're going to get a foul on Westfield. It's interesting that... um. Franklin beat Milburn in their first round game, but only by one point. Westfield in the preseason blew out Milburn. That foul was on Jelani Pierre. Warriors drive and baseline, but he stepped out of bounds. Turnover. So Murray, the 6'5 senior headed to Vassar College, will bring it up. Coming off a double-double, there's a three from Hess, but he couldn't hit. I'm a little confused here that Franklin's coming out in a 2-3 zone. That's not a great zone when you're playing a great three-point shooting team, which Westfield is, a little bit surprising choice here from Coach Floyd. The Chief Thief, Nick Migliardi, with two steals, that was a big one, Mac, and he got fouled on his way down the court. Yeah, Westfield playing great defense here early. You saw Parker doing his part, stepping in for a charge, not known for his defensive presence. Palmieri taking him out late in games. On, when, on defensive possessions, but he's showing what he can do there. Interesting to see what this 2-3 could do. Westfield usually has gone up against a lot of man-to-man -man Ds. Mealy looking inside, Murray out, Hess, three, yes! Parker Hess, number 123, 
gives West Seal a 7-0 lead. Parkrest finishing that shot with number one, all the bigger, the bigger player in calendar all over him. Great shot. He got the little space he needed to finish the shot. Loose ball there. War is able to get it. Floater, no. Murray the rebound. West Seal pushing. Hess slows it down, though. They gave it back to Parker. A little too long on the three. Loose ball goes to Murray as he soared up for that board. Deep three. Matty Ice. 10 0 Blue Devils. And the Warriors want a timeout. What a start. Yeah, and this is a timeout. Coach Floyd should probably called about two minutes earlier. He let his guys get down 10 0 early. Westfield's feeling not. They're feeling good, and they got the big lead. See the huddle there for Westfield. And Matt, the student section coming out again in force tonight. It's a Hawaiian out. They're excited. And a great start for Westfield up by 10. Yeah, Parker in your post-game interview during the last game said that this student section was a big part of their win. They, the, this team feeds off those guys, and when they come out loud and proud, they always play better. And getting off to a good start, always good for the Westfield Blue Devils and hitting some big threes, Mac. Yeah, for sure. Every guy's hot, especially with... Franklin playing a 2-3 zone, leaving excess of space for these Westfield players to get off, the sh to get off their three-point shots. Owens got four points, Parker with a three, as well as Matt LaCourt with a three. With that three-point shot, Parker has 123 three-pointers on his career, with over half of them being in his senior season. Definitely a breakout year for Parker Hess. Definitely, he's the all-time leader. That jump shot, no good. But it's, it's interesting, Mac. Matt LaCourt actually holds the record for most threes in a single season with Hess right behind him. Owen Murray is going to get called for the walk before the foul. Fans not liking it, and the crowd is going to let them hear it all night long. It doesn't matter what the fans think, Mike. The ref made the right call there. May, oh, Murray may have taken a little bump there that led him to travel, but either way, he clearly moved more, his feet more than twice. Westfield in the man D as usual. There's a jumper for Walker and he buries it. That was silky smooth. Walker's gonna have to take advantage of that shot more since he has a height advantage there. Murray coming off 15 point, 10 rebound performance on Tuesday night in the win over Bridgewater. Parker has had 23 points, a career high for him and he finds Jelani Pierre a little up and under, no, as uh, Franklin's gonna push. On the right, it's blocked by Malacourt. Open man, Jelani Pierre lays it in. That is a huge turning point. All the momentum in favor of the Blue Devils playing behind their crowd and a great defensive play. Yeah, with Franklin pushing it up the court, that led Matt LaCourt to get the easy block there, and Jelani Pierre still didn't yet get back on defense because Franklin was bringing it up so fast, he was wide open for the easy two. Dale Swindle just knocked down a big three. Makes it a 12-5 ball game in favor of the Blue Devils. Murray gonna hand it off to Nick Mealy. So important for him to get off to a good start. Almost lost that one, but he's able to finish the layup. Yeah, it looks like he held percent, uh, uh, possession of that ball and actually traveled. But it looks like he got away with one there. He's been cold as of late in these last couple games. And the Chiefs the gets the steal, and there he goes. Four points already. Good to see Nick Mealy back in the stat sheet. Mealy going for another steal instead. It's a three from Swindle in the corner now. Murray the board, another fast break. Jelani, he's got a man on his back, but he's able to lay it in as Westfield is off to an 18 to five star in the first five minutes. Westfield is just killing Franklin on the breaks. They've got an easy run out to points. Franklin taking long, quick shots. Murray going skying high for the rebound, looking up court, finding guys streaking to the basket for easy points. Neely got his head in there again. Hess finds Nick. Layup good, and you can see the chemistry on the floor tonight in Westfield. Exactly what I just said, Mike, happened once again. Another steal! Murray, this time the layup. This place is going bananas. 22 to five the score. How many turnovers are the Warriors gonna give up? 
all the momentum in favor of Westfield. 2.15 to go. I'll let the crowd speak for itself. Are you kidding me? You couldn't have scripted it any better, Mac. 22 to five, a 17 point lead. Great defense from Westfield and lots of mistakes on the Franklin side, leading Coach Floyd to burn two early timeouts here. Westfield hyped up, all, the whole bench was on their feet. The student section is, is loud and proud here in Westfield High School. Channing warned that bus already in the first quarter. And if Westfield were to win, which it looks like we're gonna see that already tonight, they take on the winner of Newark Eastside, North Underton, and as long as Westfield wins, it will be on this floor Saturday night in one of the biggest games in school history. Yeah, this game's so far from over, Mike. If I was Coach Floyd in this situation, I would switch to a man-to-man, -man, man to man press and also slow down the ball, stop pushing it up court. That's forcing Franklin into tournament into turnovers and forcing them into bad shots. They gotta slow the ball up, get into the offense, and make sure Westfield can't get easy three-point shots off. And for Franklin, down 17, Mac, this is a team composed of 11 seniors, one junior, no underclassmen. 11 of those guys' careers could be coming to an end already. Yeah, and I gotta say, Mike, I've never seen anything like that. A, comprise, a team comprised of 11 seniors. I don't know what Coach Floyd's gonna do next year with only one returning player who's gonna have varsity experience. Franklin inside, they can't hit the layup. Mealy gets the board. And so great to see the Chief Thief have some confidence tonight. He's got six points, bunch of steals, and there's his signature jumper, but he can't get the roll. Probably not the best shot there for Mealy. He has a great pull-up shot, but over two defenders, he couldn't get a good look at the rim. Minute 40 to go in the first quarter. Malachi Walker, no. Offensive rebound, it's put up and good. Dale Swindle been a lone bright spot for the Warriors tonight. Let's not forget about Malachi Walker, who's um, seen the kill Westfield from the pull-up. Nice screen set by Hess. Corner three, Jelani. Pierre could hit it. Nice tip from Malachor. Deep three, Hess, no. A go out of bounds as the Warriors will get possession. That little run from Westfield is all but over right now, so they just need to calm down, stay composed, get into their offense, stop taking quick shots. Such a great environment here, as the Warriors almost lost that one again. Instead, this time Nick Mealy gets the rebound as Westfield will push. And we have a travel on Murray, it looks like. Tim Norris gonna check in the fan favorite for Matt LaCour. There's a three, can't get it to go. And these fans, Mac, they love Mr. Norris. Let's see if he can do some work inside. Gets it to go, and the crowd's gonna love that one. Tim Wait, Norris. Tim Norris on call there, the crowd chanting his name. He fed off that, made the tough boot inside, a power play for Tim Norris. Walker inside, he fell. One official call a walk, and that will be the call on the floor. With Franklin down by, by almost 20, they have no choice here but to show a little pressure up the court, force Westfield into some turnovers. Murray bringing the ball up over the smaller defender in Cameron Silver. Clock's at 15, Mealy off the screen, drills the three to give Westfield a 20 point lead, wow. Nick Mealy contorting and scoring in the air with a little leg kick. Shot at the buzzer from Franklin is off. It was Cam Silver missing the shot. They are gonna call Mealy's last shot a deep two. So the score 26 to seven, a 19 point lead for the Westfield Blue Devils in the quarterfinals of the state tournament. Yeah, total knockout punch there for Westfield in the first quarter. They owned every minute. They played their game. They got easy runouts. Franklin is bleeding and on the ground. They need some answers. Couldn't have asked for a better start. They came out on fire, but Mac, you're not gonna shoot the ball well every game, but if you play with that kind of defense, getting those steals, 
easy transition layups, you're always gonna make those. Yeah, for sure. Westfield is usually a team that lives and dies by the three-point shot. They don't even need the three-point shot here today as they're getting easy layups, uncontested shots around the basket. They're finishing and they're winning. And such a great atmosphere as we keep on mentioning. The whole town really coming to support the Blue Devils in the state tournament run. Everyone contributing also, Nick Neely. I think he's got nine points in the first quarter. Murray's chipped in his uh, four points. LaCord hitting a three. Hess hitting three. The whole team playing well. And this is what you love to see from a group like this. Yeah, Parker has said in his post-game interview after the Bridgewater game that when these guys are moving the ball around, finding the open man, they're unbeatable. And we're seeing that here today. Wesley gets the ball to start here, and they're looking. Murray off the alley-oop, but he couldn't lay it in. And he's going to get called for a foul after that play. If Owen Murray hit that shot, Mike, all the Franklin players should have taken their shoes off and left. <laughs> well, we saw Parker Hess try to lob one up to Owen in the uh, Bridgewater game. Weren't able to get that one, but, man, if they can connect on one of those alley-oops, it's going to be sensational. We saw it against Plainfield. Malachi Walker having a nice game for the Warriors as he hit that shot. That seems to be the bread and butter shot from Malachi Walker. There's Tim Norris again inside. And that Dubfield student section loves Mr. Norris. You have Norris finishing on over two defenders. Looks like he might have gotten pushed there. Possible foul, but he finishes anyway. Tim's got four. Here comes Franklin. Mid-range jumper, no. Norris the board. Murray driving, left hand, no. Franklin gets the board, they got numbers. Almost lost, and instead it's a three for Silver, he can't hit. And a terrible shot there, they were looking for a foul. And instead, Parker Hess lays it in with the right hand. Oh my goodness, Mac. We knew it was going to be a different uh, outcome than the Bridgewater game, but we certainly didn't expect it like this. Swindle just got called for the illegal screen, and the West Hill players are fired up. Yeah, and these Franklin players are visibly frustrated. They're all forcing bad shots here, three bad looks by three different players at the, end of the, at the other end of the court. They're not playing as a team. It's not over it. Until it's over, Matt, but it definitely looks like the Warrior season's going to come to an end. Mealy swings it. LaCour driving left hand. As they work it around. Tim's open in the post. As well as Murray down there. He's got a smaller defender on him. Instead, Mealy looking. It's going to be stolen. Six minutes to go. Linden working on Mealy. Gives it up, double team, they can't get the shot to go. Murray, coast to coast, throws one up. No, Norris got a piece of that one but can't hit. Linden will uh, give it up, corner three, no, from Greg Williams. 5.40 to go, Norris can't hit that one. Gets his own rebound and puts it in. Tim's got six. Tim Norris got bailed out on that one. He missed the easy layup, but it fell right into his hands. A second chance, he wasn't going to miss two in a row. Richard Hayne lost that one off his foot. There goes Shalali Pierre diving behind the back pass. Pierre the layup and the foul. The roof comes off the Westfield High School Gymnasium. All the, the whole bench, the whole place is on their feet. Jelani Pierre going over the top with a bigger defender and calendar. Great poise. The look on his face didn't even change. A standing ovation from the Westfield fans and one of the plays of the year right there. Jelani Pierre with the hustle diving for the loose ball on the floor. Murray gets it behind the back and then Mr. Pierre completes the old fashioned three point play as he'll come out as Westfield is leading by 26 with 5.17 in the second. Yeah, one of the best overall plays I've seen all season, Mike. They say great defense turns into great offense, and that showed on that possession. Jelani Pierre dove on the floor and got rewarded at the other end. Defense! Defense! 
Callender gives it up. Franklin. And he got fouled. It's Irving Callender, the senior, going to the line. Parker Hess going to check in at the next dead ball. And Callender shooting right into that student section, but he's still able to hit the first free throw. This, these are Franklin's first free throws of the game, and Coach Floyd using this opportunity during that first shot to talk to his four other players on the court. Adam McDaniel is into the game for the first time for the West Seal Blue Devils, the only underclassman between these two teams. Second free throw, the toilet bowl lay, rolls in. And Warriors are going to press. Hess driving baseline, picked up his dribble, was looking for Rump Peters. We have a kickball. West Seald will take it out underneath. Parker tried the behind the back pass, but this is a state, state game. I don't suggest that these players get fancy. They need to do what they need to do to finish this game. Hess off the inbounds pass, driving left, hey, tough shot. Gets it to go, Parker Hess. Franklin swinging it around. Callender off the pick, he drills the three ball. He's their leading scorer at 10 and a half points per game. Him and Malachi Walker, really the dynamic duo for the Warriors, and they're going to need their game of their lives if they want to get back into this ball game, Mac. Yeah, Callender seems to be really warming up here with five quick points in short order as Andres commits the turnover. Franklin will regain possession. And they say it was last touched by Westfield. 23 point lead, 4.12 to go. McDaniel guarding the ball. For Franklin, this is also the first we're seeing of thir number 32, Elijah Jones, a bigger player. That's what Franklin's going to need. They're going to need bigger bodies on the court. The matchup with Westfield's smaller players. And Jones just lost it inside. Hess, three on two. Murray up and under reverse. You name it. Owen Murray doing it all tonight. And that's a walk, another forced turnover. Westfield's defense looking like Press Virginia out here, Mac. Yeah, Owen Murray contorting and scoring in the air. He, he, he jumped on one end and finished on the other. That's a great move. Maybe the best I've seen from him all night. And the way it's looking, we're going to get to see a lot of uh, some of the bench guys tonight, Mac. Yeah, hopefully Palmieri gives them a chance to play. This is likely the last game that players like Nick Laurie and Marius Chinikin might ever see action. Has thought about the three instead. LaCour in the corner. Hess driving. Beautiful pass. Rump Peters lays it in. It's been a highlight reel all night long for Westfield. And their defense has been stellar as well. As Jeff Gagum, Justice Bowers are both going to check in. We saw neither of them on Tuesday night, Mac. Yes, yeah, Paul Mary elected to play only eight guys in the last game of Bridgewater Raritan. But with them almost up by 30 points here, it's going to give some more guys a chance to play to show them what they can do and maybe earn a spot going deeper into this tournament. Murray and LaCour come out of the ball game. Westfield's got 16 active players for this state tournament. Hess for three, no. Rebounded by Jones. Counter trying to get by Hess, but he lost it. No number, a spin move. Almost called for the walk instead. Gagum, offensive rebound, but then he gets called for the travel. Yeah, it looks like Jones maybe tied him out underneath. Gagum jumping up and then going down with the basketball. That's a travel. If you're just joining us in the quarterfinal round of the Group 4 North 2 tournament, Westfield got off to a 22 to five start. What a night it's been for Westfield. Mealy gonna check in at the dead ball. A little water on the court right now. Yeah, not just a quick start, Mike, but they haven't taken their foot off the gas here as they're almost up by 30. They're not giving Franklin an inch here. And this place just keeps on filling up. There are no seats left to speak of. 
that free throw was a complete break. You know what, Mike? With a team like Franklin down by this much, I think it's somewhat disrespectful for the student section to be yelling at an opposing player like that. What are you gonna do, high school students? As Westfield nearly turned it over instead, Justice Bowers playing without that headband. Gagan, the offensive board, he got blocked. Transition, Franklin, that's a foul. A reach on Parker Hess. 15 foul on West, you have Parker's second foul of the ball game. A highlight play for Franklin there though. Eliza Jones pinning Jeff Gagan's shot against the backboard. Justin Orsini, the senior, number 15 in blue, into the game for the 12 and 10 Franklin Warriors. Orsini, deep three, no. But there's Elijah Jones getting the rebound and gives it back out to counter. Nice crossover, deep two. Can't get it to fall as the Chief Thief having himself a ball game and finds an open Jeff Kagan, but right off the fingertips. Calendar, nice pump fake, bucket good, and the foul. I'll tell you, Mac, Mr. Irvin Calendar, the senior, having himself a pretty darn good, most likely last high school career game. Yeah, Irvin Calendar seems to be the only one on this Franklin team that has shown up to play here today, having some nice moves. He scored five points in short order early and seems to be finding a shot here. Calendar able to complete the three-point play. Definitely a bright spot for the Warriors. Mealy almost lost that one. Justice Bowers able to grab it as Westfield scores again. Great court vision there from Justice Bowers. He got the ball off, off Mealy's. Misplay there and found Adam McDaniel cutting to the basket. And there's a walk, another turnover for the Warriors. Gagan will come out, Norris in for Westfield. Yeah, Jeff Gagan struggled during his first two minutes of play here, juggling the ball, not being able to get his hands on it. He got blocked against the backboard, so Palmieri's going to give him a breather here. Justice Bowers gives it up to Mealy. A minute five to go. We have a off legal screen on Westfield. It's a 26 point lead. Counter falling down, couldn't hit the shot. He's forcing it, Mike. But a wide open look, still can't hit. It was Greg Williams. 45 seconds to go, Mealy driving, beautiful find, but Norris well, got fouled. Eliza Jones meeting Tim Norris up there at the pinnacle, but got a little hand on his hand leading to the foul. What a game it's been. Highlight after highlight, Mac. And for Franklin here, Mike, their body language is just miserable. They look like they, they, don't, they don't want to play. They just have to forget about the score, pretend it's 0-0, and try to work their way back into this game inch by inch. If you look at the Warriors bench, you can see guys, their heads down, hands on their mouth. They, they realize this is going to be it. It's something you see every year in March Madness when the team, team's run comes to an end, and that's what you're seeing tonight. Deep, deep three. Once again is off. Jelani was open, but it'll slow it out. Westfield gonna hold for one shot. 20 seconds to go. Up by 26. Bowers can't hit the mid-range jumper. Norris offensive rebound. Gets it to go. Mr. Tim Norris. Having himself a ball game. 
turnaround, shot is no good. 45-17, a complete blowout here at West Hills High School. Yeah, when I saw these Franklin players walk into the gym, I never expected a blowout like this with their size. I thought they would have a chance to contend with Westfield, but haven't shown up to play at all. Irvin Callender has to be more of a leader, come out, say some things to his guys at halftime, and they're going to need to find their stroke in the second half. Westfield and Mac all around, everybody contributing for the Blue Devils. For um, Franklin, it's been mostly Malachi Walker and Irvin Callender, the seniors for the Warriors playing well. But Jelani Pierre doing some great things. Nick Mealy, great to see him get back on track. Parker Hess doing his thing as usual, and Owen Murray the leader. Yeah, these guys pass on the rock, finding, finding the open, find the open man. And um, not, there's not one Westfield player that's stuffing the stat sheet here today. They're all playing their part. They're all doing their ro role, exactly what Coach Palmieri wanted. And we'll get you updates from all across the state of New Jersey in the Group 4 North 2 State Tournament. And we'll have the stats coming up for you in the second half. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere here on BDTV. Welcome back to West Hills High School, everybody, for the quarterfinals of the Group 4 North 2 sectional tournament where the West Hill Blue Devils lead it 45-17 at the half, a complete blowout, and all around a team effort, Mac. Yeah, that's for sure. Every West Hill player getting in and contributing. Owen Murray with eight points, Nick Mealy with eight points, Parker Hess with seven, Jelani Pierre with seven. These guys are passing the rock around and playing great basketball. And a total of 12 first half turnovers for the Franklin Warriors. But they're able to get off to a nice start there with the layup. It was Malachi Walker, he's got six on the night. Murray driving, gives it up. There's LaCour, tough reverse. Murray got a piece of that one to tip it, but it will be Franklin Ball headed down the other way. Yeah, LaCour forcing the issue there. Looks like the Franklin players might be hand checking Owen Murray and the Westfield guards out on the perimeter. Another sold out crowd for the second time in a row. And Mac, I can tell you, Saturday night is gonna be an electric atmosphere. Yeah, that's gonna be one of the biggest games in Westfield basketball history as they're taking on, honestly, a more talented Newark Eastside team. Well, Newark Eastside still gotta take care of business tonight against North Hunter in July. Pierre just called call for the foul. I believe that's his second. Westfield's only won two sectional titles in school history. 1962 and 1972, one state title in school history. Yeah, and winning this 72. game and making it to the final four of the state tournament is an accomplishment within itself for this Westfield team, who doesn't have really a rich history of great basketball teams. And the way it works is Westfield's gonna have to obviously win today, beat the winner of next game, then they would play Linden most likely in the sectional final, and then that would get them to the semifinals of the state tournament right now in the sectional play. Foul on the floor on Westfield. Calendar grabbing his wrist as he clearly got fouled on that play. Might have gotten hit in the man area too as he fell down on that three point attempt. Coach is not happy with that foul call. 6.43 to go in the third as Irving Calendar is at the line to shoot two. Misses the first. We'll see who comes in, Mac, for Westfield and at what time in relation to their bench. Yeah, and I got to <laughs> say, I think Franklin only has three players who have scored this, in this game in Callender, Walker, and Dale Swindle. And Callender's actually shooting three on the three-pointer he attempted. That was my mistake. Missed the first, made the second, third coming up. And he's able to hit two out of three to cut it to a 24 point ball game. Franklin gonna show a little pressure here. It's also nice to see that the student section has stuck around for the second half. Going to stay here, keep their seats and continue to support their team even though Westfield is up by a big margin. Mealy with a great drive. Put him in double figures, Mac. Beautiful take finishing with the left hand. 
That shot no good from counter. Loose ball falls to the Warriors. They can't hit the offensive board. 6-10 to go. Here comes Hess. It's a little behind the back. Eventually they'll give it up to Murray. Six minute mark in the third. Something that Nick Mealy is going to have to work on moving forward is not over dribbling. He did it a bunch of times in the Bridgewater game. It led to turnovers. And another one there for Mealy, another turnover. Khalil Powell will bring it up for the Warriors. Khalil Powell, the sole junior on this Franklin team. Which means he'll be the only returning player. Just pretty remarkable, and the uh, Warriors have put themselves in a pretty tough hole. Coach Floyd must have had a lot, must have lots of trust in his JV players this year, or maybe there's just a lot of kids who um, weren't interested in playing basketball this season for these Warriors. Murray coast to coast at the other end will go to the line for two shots. West Hill's not letting up here in the second half, Mike. And if I'm a Franklin player, I'm thinking right now, is this really the way I want to go out? Is this really the way I want my career to end? If I were them, I'd be playing for pride right now, clawing and fighting for every inch to make this a reputable score, a reputable finish. They're definitely doing, the, uh, doing better. That free throw is not going to count. Hit the top wire. Westfield outscored the Warriors 26 to 7 in the first quarter. The second quarter were much closer, 19 to 10. It's a foul on the floor before the emphatic jam. Basket will not count. Yeah, Mikhail Walker showing something to the crowd here. He got Coach Floyd to give him a nice little clap. That's what. The Franklin team is going to need, they're going to need to be aggressive just like that. They were looking for Walker again for the alley-oop, but Malacour with the arm bar, not allowing Walker to get anywhere near the rim. Hess, three, no. Hess, Hess made his first three, but is struggling here as of late behind the line. Mealy finds an open Murray! Timeout taken by Westfield. 60 second timeout. We call that a dunk? Uh, I don't think so, Mike. That was more of an emphatic layup in my opinion. But also, I know the crowd wanted a dunk, but that was a smart play by Owen Murray. When you're up by this much, instead of doing something flashy, maybe potentially hurting his hand on the rim, he just laid it up for two points. Well said, you know, if he were to hurt his hand and not be able to play Saturday night, it would just be a shame. And he, it would be something he would one forget for the rest of his life. Yeah, and take it from me, Mike. Dunking hurts. Definitely a lot of frustration in the air for the 12 and 10 Franklin Warriors. Yeah, and you can hear it from their side of the crowd. And they got about 13 minutes left in their high school careers, 11 of these 12 players. Franklin ball underneath. Number three, Richard Hare is into the ball game. Definitely the strongest player on the court, Mac. On Mac's apparel watch tonight, we have Irvin Callender with the nice high top Kobe's, all yellow, very flashy, matching the uniform. That's a good look for him. And Mac, what about uh, number two, Tyler Lennon? With those blue Under Armour ones. Yeah, the Steph Currys, those are also very nice. These Westwood players electing for all white shoes. And Richard Hare just hit that three ball right on cue. 23 point lead, Murray with the crossover. Showing his moves. And that'll be a foul on Irving Callender. Parker Hess. Takes the, the foul, Westfield fans. A lot to say about that one. Yeah, Callender lowered his shoulder. Clearly a cheap shot there on Parker Hess. Then he walked right past him instead of extending his hand to help him up. That's not good sportsmanship and not a good look when you're down by 20 points. And how about Parker Hess um, learning from the situation on Tuesday night when as Nick Mealy almost hit that three. 
Yeah, very impressive from Parker to keep his cool there. That's what he didn't do during the last game when, when Menzuko for um, Bridgewater Raritan fell on top of him. Here comes Franklin Steele. Walker tried to dunk it, missed the layup. Gets his own rebound, puts it in. All of a sudden, Franklin making a little push here, Mac. Yeah, now it's only a 20-point margin instead of a 30-point margin. Walker sticking with the play, tried to go for the dunk, then fought otherwise midway through the shot, making him the miss the layup, but luckily the ball fell right back into his hands. Murray kicks it out. Pierre had a decent look at a three, instead gave it up. Clock at 3.30 in the third quarter. 49-28 your score in favor of Westfield. You like to see the Westfield starters run away with this one here to end this quarter to see their bench players get one last chance in to, to play in a real basketball game. 3.20 to go now. Mealy, got a lot of room to work with. Gets the ball back in the corner. Looking for LaCourt instead. Uh, senior in the front row will make the catch. Yeah, that's a risky run when you make a no-look pass there like Murray. Mur Jelani was in position to catch that pass, but since Mealy wasn't keeping his head up, Jelani had moved a little bit to his left, leading to a turnover. Three minutes to go now in the third. There's another three from Hare. And the big man can stroke it. He's got six. I gotta say, Mike, Franklin's been owning this quarter as the court can't answer. It's an 18 point ball game now it's, as Franklin hits another one. Yeah, a and little pressure here against Westfield as Paul Mary's gonna call his first time out of a night. The Franklin player is showing great cohesion there as Walker floating it up right to his teammate for the alley oop. Definitely a great second quarter, uh, third quarter, excuse me, for the Franklin Warriors. Yeah, this is a team that came out and decided that they were no longer going to be embarrassed like they were in the first half. And they're on a 16 to four run, as I was just calculating math there, Mac, in this third quarter. Again, a 16 to four run for the Franklin Warriors to start out this third quarter. Uh, Coach Paul Mary in his fifth season, current record 65 and 59. Took a 60 second timeout and a well needed one, Mac, for the West Hill Blue Devils. Yeah, for sure. And with a break in the action here, Mike, it might be a good time to look around at the rest of the uh, state tournament bracket. North Hundredton pulled up the upset against Plainfield last night, as well as New York East Side. We expected that to advance past to the next round, defeating Washington Hills. Yeah, New York East Side, the three, North Hundredton, the six. They play each other tonight. Linden, the one, Union, the eight. Ridge the three, taking on East Orange the 12. All four sectional quarterfinal games in action. Both semifinals Saturday night at neutral locations. Excuse me, at the home site locations. Westfield will be home in that one as long as they could hold on. It would be one of the biggest uh, comebacks in a long time if Franklin were in fact to do something with this run they're having here. Yeah, and that Linden Union game is bound to be a good one as Union is playing very good basketball as of late. They pulled up that upset against Union Catholic earlier a couple weeks ago to um, give Westfield the outright title for their conference. Yeah, the Union County Conference Mountain Division. And I wouldn't be surprised if Linden were to lose as Mallet Court tips that one to Parker Hess because the Tigers really don't have a leader. Mac, their best player is probably their sophomore, Tavon Jones. They're missing Otis Livingston, who's having a great year at George Mason. Three from Franklin as we get back to the game is off. Jelani looking for Parker, but it got tipped and stolen. And all of a sudden, Mac, the momentum in this gym has changed. Three for Hare, that would have been a huge triple. Instead, Murray will slow it down. Six, uh, 80 seconds left in the third. Yeah, West Hill's got to get the ball inside, slow it down here to prevent this from becoming a real game. We have a foul on the floor on Franklin, on Malachi Walker. It's the fourth team foul 
for the Warriors. Wesley also with 14 fouls. Walker's going to come out of the game. Interesting play here by Floyd, taking his, his two best players in Malachi and Callender off the floor in the middle of this run they're having. And now in the third, Mealy driving, floater off the glass, couldn't connect. Other end, Franklin, floater no, rebounded by Timmy Norris. Tyler Lennon was the one who missed the floater, hasn't really gotten himself going tonight. Nice screen set by Norris, wide open, Jelani Pierre in the corner. He hits a three, and for Franklin, Cameron Silver is shaken up on that play. He slowly is walking off as he comes off the game, I believe, will come out of the game. Yeah, we had a referee timeout there to get Silver off the court. He was visibly shaken up. The clean screen, though, as Silver was just in the wrong receiving end of that one. That was 200 plus pounds of Timmy Norris coming at you full speed, Mac. Yeah, that guy sure eats a lot of Hershey's. Another foul on the floor. That one's on Jelani Pierre. Twenty seconds left in the third. Lead back to 19. Hare looking inside for Jones. Tough shot, Callender in the corner, no. Hess comes away with the board, clock at five. Stolen, Callender lays it up. That's just a, not a great decision by Parker Hess. Third quarter gonna come to an end. 52-35, your score, 17 point lead for Westfield. Yeah, Westfield up by 20, but they can't seem to put this one away as Franklin won that third quarter. They got off to a 16-4 run. And now we get go back to the bracket, Mac. Linden rolled past J.P. Stevens Union. It was a really close ball game. They beat Dickinson. The 12 seed East Orange upset Woodbridge. Who the, they were 20 and five. Max Mahoney and the Ridge Red Devils took care of Bayonne. New York East side, North Hunter didn't both won. And you called an upset because Plainfield Mac, they had a really good rec uh, decent record I should say, but in a really tough conference. I really thought they were gonna win too. Yeah, Plainfield a really tough team of a very talented senior and Jaquil Simmons. That team actually beat Westfield earlier in the season. That was a clearly an upset there for North Hunton. As we stated earlier, we're putting um, Linden on upset alert in this game as they face off against Union tonight. Yeah, I think they'll be able to take care of the Farmers, but then Saturday night, as long as Ridge wins, I think Max Mahoney, man, he's really something special. Headed to Boston University. I think he might have what it takes to lead the, the uh, Red Devils. And obviously, Westfield took care of Bridgewater on Tuesday night. Yeah, Linden the more talented team, but Rich has the best player on the court if that matchup was to happen. The final score of the West Hill game was 57-53. And as we mentioned, Milburn lost to Franklin. We see here today, 48-47 the final. Winner of tonight's game plays Saturday night, seven o'clock against the winner of Newark, North Hunterton. West Hill Wednesday will be home. We'll have the call for you right here on BDTV. Mac Lederman and myself. 17 point lead for Westfield as Mealy spinning and reeling. Can't finish. Risky pass there for Franklin. Calendar can't finish the layup at the other end. And we will have a jump ball on the floor. Possession arrow in favor of the Warriors. Nice job there from Timmy Norris to give up his body and wrap the Franklin player up to, to create a jump ball. And in that third quarter, Mac, the uh, Warriors had 18 points. They only had 17 in that first half, so outscoring themselves. Westfield was quiet. They only scored seven. 
Lennon was blocked on that play. But it looks like he might have been fouled by Mealy as I could hear a little slap from all the way over here. But either way, nonetheless, it pays off for Franklin as the ball fell Count, right into Walker's hands. Counter was all over Murray. Great screen set by Parker Hess on that play. Under seven in the final quarter here at Westfields High School. Michael Lennon alongside Mac Lederman. As Mealy driving, finds an open. Hess who missed the three. Here comes Callender. Coast to coast. Can't get that to go. As Parker Hess gonna drive. And Tyler Lennon, the senior, commits what looked to be an intentional foul. Yeah, he committed that foul there to stop the fast break for Westfields. Parker Hess has been struggling from free point land today. He made his first one, but has yet to hit another. Six and a half to go now. Up 15 are the Westfield Blue Devils. It was going to be interesting, Mac, because if you look at the common opponents, Franklin split with Bridgewater Raritan. So we didn't know what team we were going to see here tonight. And they're a t talented team with a lot of height and a lot of senior leadership, but nothing compared to Westfield as you see here tonight. Hess driving. He'll go to the line for two. Yeah, and another interesting thing about prior matchup is that Franklin in that first round defeated Milburn by, but they, by only one point while Westfield blew them out before the season in a scrimmage. And the place will get quiet as Parker Hess able to hit the first free throw. Not one of his best games in terms of scoring, but really doing a lot outside of that in assists and on the defensive end, Mac. Yeah, Parker Hess is, has, is the best scorer for this team, but he's not showing that tonight. So Nick Mealy, Jelani Pierre, and Owen Murray have been picking it up, but Parker doing all the intangibles. And Mealy, the Chief Thief, steal for three. A little too long of a match. I think it's better in a way that Parker's a little quiet tonight, and Mealy is having himself a ball game as the Warriors just keep on fighting, trying to hang in there. Linden gets the steal, gives it up. Walker is going to go to the line for two. The momentum clearly in favor of the Franklin Warriors, but Mac a little too late. Excuse me, too little, too late. It seems like I wouldn't say that, Mike. They still get, they still got six minutes of basketball to play. That's a lot of time to make a comeback and a lot of time to score 12 points, which they'll be down by if Walker is able to make both of these free throws. But first free throw is going to roll out for Malachi Walker. The um, senior averaging 10.3 points per game along with five and a half rebounds. Unfortunately, since these stars haven't been able to put a lid on this game, it's unlikely that we'll see Marius Chenikin or Nick Laurie or any other of the bench players here tonight. And by the way, Parker Hess with the three he had earlier in the game, he now has... 20 consecutive games for Mr. Hess with a three ball. Pretty remarkable. And Owen Murray, by the way, passed 600 points in this first half. Nick Mealy inching closer to 500. Yeah, if Westfield's able to move on to place an east side likely in the next game, I expect Mealy to be able to get to that 500 mark. And last game against Bridgewater, Parker has surpassed 700. He's the leader in points among active players here at Westfield as he sinks the first free throw, 15 point lead, 55-40. Your score, five and a half left to play. This has been a season of breaking boundaries in athletics for the Westfield Blue Devils uh, for, as them winning their first football championship in a long time and for this basketball team winning their first Mountain Division Conference since 1997. 1977, Westfield just got the steal there, but then they get a walk on Tim Norris. So another turnover, 522 to go in the fourth. Franklin working it around, Lennon. It's been quiet, not a good idea. Parker Hess steals that one as he tried to go up for the layup instead 
Got deflected out of bounds. We haven't seen a lot of rumpy turns. Uh, was only in the game for a little bit. He's back in for Westfield. Uh, Coach Corey Floyd going to take a timeout for the Warriors. Smart timeout here by Floyd as um, Franklin is once again up against the wall. They had a nice run, but they seem to be cooling off here as they're down by 16 with about five minutes left to play. We'll see, as you said, Mac, look like, looking like the run's going to come to an end uh, for these Franklin Warriors. And 11 seniors out of 12, uh, they're in some, pretty, some trouble in the, for next season. Yeah, you got to feel bad for these 11 seniors for this Franklin team. This is probably the last time any of them will ever play organized basketball. But at least they're playing with heart here, they're playing with pride, and they made this a respectable game at the very least. And what a matchup. It's going to be Saturday night on this same court. West Hills High School will host the, <clears throat> the Group 4 North 2 sectional semifinal against either Newark or North Hunterdon. Definitely going to be a big game. They've only won two sectional titles in school history. And then if they win that one Saturday night, they would play Monday night sectional, fi sectional final would most likely be away at Linden, but if the Tigers were to fall, Westfield would host that game. That'd be a big break for Westfield if Union or another team would be able to knock off Linden on the other side of the bracket. Definitely, because last year Westfield saw their season come to an end right here in the sectional quarterfinals at Linden. Ron Peters with two quick points there on the layup. And yeah, as I said, Westfield not a team that matches up very well with Linden. So if they can avoid facing them, they would like that. The Tigers are a much different team, though. Graduated a lot of seniors. Another seems like intentional foul, just a common foul called, but committed on purpose by Tyler Lennon. Yeah, that foul didn't really make any sense to me. If I could take a guess, Coach Floyd is trying to send Owen Murray to the line on purpose because he knows that he's a poor free throw shooter. Maybe a little hack of Murray here. But um, Mac Owen's been really working on his free throws. One and one coming up for him. Leads at 18, 58, 40 your score. But he misses that for uh, the first one, excuse me. And I guess the strategy you could say paid off. Let's see if they do it again on the ensuing possession. Hare with the fake. Spinny should have been gonna walk. Calendar lost it. And we get a foul. On number 22, Malachi Walker. Coach Corey Floyd definitely frustrated as the end, the road comes to an end tonight for these Warriors. Something uh, about March that kind of makes you feel for these kids, Mac. Yeah. When the season comes, winds down, especially for the seniors. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Mike, on another note is that Malacourt's been relatively quiet this game. Dip hit some huge threes though in the second half as Walker not ready to end his high school career just yet. Able to finish the layup. But talking about LaCour, uh, he was a huge key in the second half against Bridgewater Raritan. Hit uh, back to back threes, really gave Westfield a lot of momentum. Yep. Calendar committed the foul. So it does look like they're playing a little hack of Murray as Owen goes to the line. It's now a, du a double bonus, so he will be shooting two free throws. Coach Floyd clearly watched the tape, and if he did, he'd seen that Owen Murray misses a lot of free throws, and with them down with a margin like this, maybe hack of Murray's their best defensive option. But he's able to hit the first. Certainly a strategy you see that works in the National Basketball Association with guys like DeAndre Jordan and um, Andre Drummond and Dwight Howard. Oh, Murray does shoot free throws better than those two guys, though. And he's a little slow to get down the court as Hare cross-court pass to Powell, the only junior on the team. Bucket good, and the foul count it. Khalil Powell. Unlike all these other players on this Franklin team, Khalil Powell is the only one who's not playing for his basketball life here today. He's got a whole other season of basketball to look forward to.
is able to finish the three-point play. Leads at 14. 3.45 to go. you got to press if you're the Warriors. Lennon, we've seen him commit a couple fouls. They're not going to foul Parker Hess or Jelani Pierre here. They're going to wait to see on second thought. They are going to take a foul on Jelani Pierre. Richard Hare commits the foul. Uh, West Hill coaching staff wanting an intentional one. Yeah, it looked like a little aggressive, intentional foul there from Hare, grabbing the shoulders of Pierre. I think the refs are definitely going to look for that for the, on the next um, time Brit Franklin's going to foul. Yeah, there definitely has been some opportunities in this game for these refs to tee up Franklin. Uh, frustrated Franklin players, but they um, haven't blown their whistles yet. And if, you got, if you're wondering throughout this whole game, Franklin High School located in Somerset, New Jersey. Good half hour from here as Jelani misses that one. Offensive board, Hess couldn't put it back in. And that those highlight reels we saw in the first half, just non-existent for Westfield here in the second. That three is off. Hess able to slow it down. Splits the defenders. And a foul on Lennon, it looks like. Great move from Parker. Parker has splitting two defenders there to get the ball up court. It's a good thing he's wearing those tights because if he wasn't on that slide, he might have cut up his knees. And now senior number two, Tyler Lennon, has just fouled out of the ball game for the Franklin Warriors. As he is frustrated. You got to feel for Tyler Linden, Mike, is that foul there on Parker Hess is going to end his basketball career. But he definitely could uh, uh, alter that, Mac. He had some fouls early in this fourth quarter where just on purpose, really, no per and serve no purpose either. Yeah, unfortunately, Coach Floyd is um, having his guy as an intentional foul, and that led for Linden to foul out here with three minutes left to play. It's Parker Hess at the line for two, trying to pat on to his stats, able to hit the first free throw. And what a year it's been for Parker Hess, just named the TAP Athlete of the Week. He's got over 700 career points, the most by anybody on Westfield, and the school's all-time leader in three-pointers. 123, yeah. pretty quiet from deep today, but hits some big free throws down the stretch. I've read that type of article, Mike, and Parker Hess is, quoting, is quoted saying in that article, that, the, that he only took three days off the whole summer from practicing basketball, and it's showing off this season. Murray, other end, and one, Owen Murray. A little hesitation there. You probably want to dunk it, but again, another smart decision. And now have a chance to make it a three-point play. Yeah, if he had tried to dunk that ball, he definitely wouldn't have gotten the end one foul. That's, that play right there is probably the explanation point on this game. Under three to go, 18 point lead. Murray hits the free throw, makes it a 19 point lead. And Mac, as you said, it's the icing on the cake for the Westfield Blue Devils as they are going to advance to the Group 4 North 2 semifinals Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Right now, I here. think it's a great chance if I coach, I was Coach Palmieri, to put his bench players in for one last time. I can't see any reason why he wouldn't, as Franklin has no chance of winning this game. And the Warriors will turn it over. Just breaks my heart, Mike, to see Paul Mary not putting these players in the game. I think they'll get him in with about a minute left. We'll see what happens. There's a great atmosphere, great energy in the crowd all night long as LaCourt and Wesley are going to work it around. Murray gets a great pass from Mealy and lays it in. Leads back to 21. The biggest lead for West Hill tonight was almost 30 points. Justice Bowers is going to head to the media table to check back in. And Floyd's going to give his seniors, who haven't played so far, a chance to get into this game. Yeah, David Gray, senior, checks in along with Justin Orsini. It's an air ball. The student section will let the 
Warriors know their season's about to come to an end. They're still going to press. Bowers into the game, Mac, as you mentioned. They able to get into Parker Hess. Two ten to go in the final quarter. Has drive and left hand got. Looks like it got deflected. Murray able to save it though for Westfield. Franklin electing not to foul Murray intentionally. Now they're just going to let the clock run out. Now with two minutes left in the twenty-one point game, Valley's not going to do anything. Hess, beautiful take, a little up and under, but couldn't convert. He'll go to line. Hess continuing to keep his foot on the gas here as he's taking some quick drives to the basket instead of holding the ball out, running out the clock. Mac, at this time, we'd like to thank Varsity Vantage for all that they've done with our post-game interviews, calls of the week. And it's just been a remarkable season. I've got to call about 20-plus games. You've been doing the past five or so, and we just don't want it to end. Yeah, I'm glad to have joined on to this broadcast late into my senior year. This has been a great experience. I'm glad I'm here on the mic with you, Mike. <laughs> Minute 51 to go. And the good news is we'll at least have one more game to call Saturday night as Parker Hess hits another th free throw. And Mac will let the student speak for itself. And after that, they're all going to walk out of the building. I think actually it's pretty disrespectful, not to Franklin, but just to this team, Mac. Leaving with the men that have to go, what are you going to go home and do right now, honestly? Yeah, they should. If they're going to stay this long, they should stick it out and not disrespect the Franklin team like that. The student section's been pretty terrible, except for these past two games. Yeah, they've been loud, they've been proud, but they need to tone it down a little bit of a notch when it comes to insulting the other team. That's not a good way to reflect Westwood High School. And they were almost non-existent for the entire regular season. We saw them in a couple games, Patrick School, UC, and the county uh, tournament. Twenty-two point lead, sixty-seven forty-five year score. If you enjoyed our broadcast today, you can check us again on Blue Devil Television Saturday night. Also the Bridgewater game will be airing on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at four o'clock and nine o'clock. Hess showing off his handle, driving. And gives it back up. 70 seconds to go here at Westfields High School. Couldn't have asked for a better ball game and a lot less nerve wracking than Tuesday night, Mac. Yeah, and stick around after the game for our post game interview, in which I'll be taking the mic and asking these players a couple of questions. And yeah, we'll see what we do with that. Under 50 to go. Westfield just going to work it around. First time we've seen Gregory Williams for Franklin check into the game. He's guarding Parker Hess. Bench players will not come in for Westfield. This is likely the end to the basketball careers as well to, for Marius Chittikin and Nick Lowry, who unfortunately were not given a chance to play in this game. Under 20 now. Mealy's just going to hold it, and the fans are going to stand up here at Westfield High School. Jelani Pierre fired up, the students fired up, the town and community all excited. Westfield basketball heading to the Group 4 North 2 sectional semifinal Saturday night right here at Westfield High School in what's going to be a huge ball game. Yeah, Westfield basketball sure is back, Mike, as this is the farthest they've gone in the tournament in a long time. They're playing great basketball. No one had expected them to win by a margin like this, but they executed. They had all things clicking. They seem to carry just momentum into the next game as they'll face a tough matchup against likely Newark. 
Eastside. Fans beginning to file out, but don't go anywhere, Mac. Our, our viewers, excuse me, as well. Post-game reaction, interviews all coming up. Final score from West Hills High School, 67-46, a 21-point victory for the West Hills Blue Devils as they once again advance to the semifinals of the sectional tournament. They've only won two sectional uh, tournaments in school history, Mac, and they're two wins away from doing that. Definitely all-around contributions from everybody. Yeah, making the final four on this bracket is, accomplish is an accomplishment within itself. No player for Westfield stuffing the stat sheet today here. They're all taking their turns, shooting the ball. They're playing great basketball. They're playing with each other, and that's what you want to see from a team like this. It was a great atmosphere, and it was a great ball game with a highlight reel first half for Westfield. It was a 45-17 game at the half. Westfield got off to... A 16-4 start, 12 turnovers in the first half for Franklin. And that wraps up our coverage from West Shields High School. Our cameraman, Harrison Bailey, Chris Calamano, analyst Mac Lederman. I'm Michael Lennart saying so long from West Shields High School, but don't go anywhere because we'll have our post-game interviews coming right up here on BDTV. And once again, next broadcast, Saturday night, right here, West Shields High School, sectional semifinal against the winner of the Newark North Hunterdon game. Have a good night, everybody. Here at Blue Devil Post Game, Jelani Pierre, Nick Mealy, Tim Norris, all huge contributors. Tonight's 67 46 win over the Franklin Warriors. Jelani, what were you guys able to, how did you guys get off to such a great start? Um, I think it was just our defense. Uh, we came out flat against Bridgewater, and you know, the captains before the game were saying that we had to come out with, you know, some tension, some fire. So, um, not more on the offensive side, but defense, you know, we sort of took pride in our defense for that first half and second half. And, you know, I think they didn't know, like, what hit them. And, Nick, how, about, how did it feel for you having such a great game? You know, you've been a little quiet the past couple weeks. Yeah, you know, um, I, haven't been, I haven't been feeling great the past couple weeks, but, you know, I, it's the last couple games of the year. I know I need to play my best and be at the top of my game. So, uh Came in today, I was just like, shook everything off and just did it. And Tim, how about eight points you had tonight? Fans love you, fan favorite. But how about the chemistry we saw tonight? You guys were just clicking. You forced 12 turnovers in that first half, and they looked uh, really depleted on all phases of the court. Yeah, you know, when everyone's touching the ball and we're getting down in transition and everyone's putting numbers in the books, I mean, we're, we're kind of unbeatable. We're moving the ball. And if everyone's putting in the basket, I mean, that's Westfield basketball. That's the way we should play. And that's the way we did play tonight. And, guys, what about your thoughts for Saturday night's huge sectional semifinal game? Um, I'm ready. Uh, I, know, I know we're all ready. You know, we, like, that, that was the game that we circled. We, want, we really want to play the winner of, what, Eastside and who else? I don't know. Eastside, North Hunterdon. Eastside, North Hunterdon. I don't know. I, I'm ready to play. Whoever wins that game, you know, I'm ready to play Saturday. Since the state schedule came out, we knew Newark East was going to be a tough team. They were in Group 3 last year. Now they're in Group 4. Top 15 team in the state, but um, they're young. They're, they're not as experienced as us. So I think if we play bas if we play our type of game and we shoot the ball well, I don't think they're going to know what hit, what hit them. And, uh, Tim, you think you guys are going to win it? Yeah, we're going to take it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you Saturday night.